and welcome to SCAN. My name is Mike Cevolino. I'm the Executive Director of SCAN, and we are here with a very, very special guest today, ABC news anchor and reporter Michelle Charlesworth. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today on Welcome to SCAN. This is great. Thanks for having me back. You guys are wonderful. Well, we really appreciate you coming in. Now, folks, as you know, it is not every day that we have an ABC news anchor here in our studios. So, uh, honestly, that's a huge thrill for us here at Senior Citizens Activities Network. But, Michelle, tell me, you have a very special connection to SCAN. So, I do. Can we talk about that? I do, yes. Okay, so Jack Livingstone is my father-in-law. And he teaches jazz. Yes, he does. And jazz history and jazz backstories and jazz, um, you know, common names, not so well-known names every Wednesday morning. And um, so I'm lucky to be connected to you guys that way. Well, I will he made it through all of COVID, right? Yes, he did. And I will tell you something. Uh, that is the most popular class here at SCAN. Oh, uh, the passion and energy that your dad brings every single day. Father-in-law. Father-in-law. Yeah. Uh, brings He's kind of my dad, too, He though. still does. A little bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is really just unmatched, Aww. and so we're just really grateful to have him. Oh, good. Yeah, he's amazing. How long has he been doing it now? 20 uh, years here? Yes. That's crazy. Right. I know you guys just celebrated him. So. And so when we, yes, we did. And when we finally came back from COVID, it was so nice to see his class uh, attendees coming in, his students coming back for the first time after 15 months, and uh, him really getting to celebrate uh, jazz music, which, as you know, he's so passionate about. He's always playing it. He's always playing it. It's seeping out the front door, all the windows, off the porch in Ocean Grove. And, you know, I always say, turn it up a little bit, a little bit more. And thank you for making sure that he was able to continue teaching and getting to people because one of the things we worried about when we were reporting on all the things happening with COVID mm -hmm. was people who couldn't connect with right. other people and they didn't have anything to do. But Wednesday mornings, anybody connected with SCAN watching Jack Livingstone's jazz uh, class had their group, their people right. with them. Yeah. And he did it on the phone, right? You guys just set up a phone thing. It well, wasn't even Zoom. It was just like people could just listen on the phone. Initially, it was that. just a phone, yes. But then uh, through a generous uh, donation from the Grunin Foundation. Uh, oh, that's right, you told me Yeah, that. they gave us the gift of Zoom and uh, with Jack was able to really have a lifeline for those students who were Amazing. everywhere from Florida to Texas and of course here in New Jersey. Thanks for doing that. That's amazing. And thank you to them. That's that's really been a lifeline for so many people. Yes. Something to look forward to, something to think about later. So, yeah, that's a great thing. And I got to listen in about three weeks ago. I was. <laughs> did you log into Zoom? I did, but I only, I was just, uh, I wasn't on the video. I could see his video, but he couldn't see me. So I was just listening. Yeah, it was fantastic. That's good. You probably would have distracted him. I was in the Linda Ronstadt class. Oh, you were? Fantastic. Yeah. I missed good. that one. It was very good. It's my favorite day here because even up in my office, I get yeah. to hear the music and it's just right? soothing. I wanted to go oh. all day long. I know he does a little explainer, then he plays stuff, then he does a little explainer, then he does a backstory. It's like Turner Classic Movies, but with jazz. Right. Oh, very well said. Mm -hmm. So I understand you uh, went to Duke University, mm -hmm. go Blue Devils. Yeah. And uh, degree in economics. Mm -hmm. So how did that translate to your mm -hmm. very successful career in journalism? Most people who work, um, who I've worked with, studied history, English, maybe Spanish, uh, were pre-med. They were told the same thing I was told. Study what you love, learn things, know things, because you will be reporting on things. You will have to take very big concepts and explain them. Not make them stupid, just simplify. And most of the people I think who study other things like journalism, it doesn't work. That's not something to study. That's something right. to do. Like be a plumber. It's a great thing. To go do it. At. You go do it. But you need to get an education when you are learning. And the great thing is it's a two for one because if it doesn't work out, you go to med school. You go to law school. I studied economics and poli sci and it was under uh, public policy. But um, yeah, so I studied stuff that I loved because I wanted to go out into the world and continue being a student mm -hmm. and a teacher. And that's why you guys do this, to keep people young and connected, yes. right? Curiosity, you keep going. That's what I wanted. And I got great advice in high school. Um, I would reach out to different journalists, Judy Woodruff, Faith Daniels, a lot of women journalists who said, you've got to be the smartest person. You've got to read everything. You love finance, study it. You love law, study it. Just study everything you love and then go out there and do it. And if you don't love journalism, or if it doesn't love you, 
you can change. You're going to law school. You go to medical school. You know, you can go to business school. Whatever you want. Win-win. So there's journalism, mm -hmm. and then there's the specific craft, which you excel at, obviously, of TV journalism. Mm -hmm. So what I want to ask you is... Thank you. When did you know, was it back at Duke as an undergrad mm -hmm. or maybe a little bit after in your first job, when did you mm -hmm. know that you wanted to be an on-air talent? When I was watching McLaughlin uh, in my mid-teens. Okay. Uh, when so I was it was sort of in the back of your mind, not... Oh, no, it was in the Mom front of Mom and Dad, my, I want to do this. Oh, no, it was in the front of my mind, reading the New York Times. We didn't have big news watchers, but I loved watching Charles Kuralt when I was 13, CBS Sunday Morning. I said, what a racket. You get to travel and meet people and learn things and write constantly and learn and write and learn and write and ask questions. Your life is never boring. You get one life. Go see what's out there. So Charles Kuralt on the road, North Carolina boy, sucked me in with his storytelling and the way he was just authentically himself. Brilliant storyteller. Brilliant. Authentically himself. So that also gave me license. Be who you are. You be that person and let other people, and then just shine a light on them when you're reporting on them. Shine a, let them talk, you know, get them out there. So that was, a, like I said, a racket. To me, it was like, oh my gosh, this is what I have to do. But if it didn't work out, I had another plan. And I was well-educated. And that was the advice I was given by amazing women journalists who... And you obviously for. believed in yourself. Well, I had great parents who, I mean, my parents, I swear, they had three of us. I was the eldest. I am the eldest still. But if we had become president of the United States, they, they wouldn't even be surprised. And I think that's how every parent should be. I know that's how you are. I yes. loved how you talked about parenting. Thank you. Detours and what the road should be. And you just own it. And you take it. And you drive the road. Right? And you yes. love your kid. So... So what a lot of people don't realize is they see Michelle Charlesworth on ABC News in New York, right? Yeah. Every night. Yeah. They don't realize the journey, the hard <laughs> knocks, the yeah. road, the, uh. the equity uh. you put into yeah. getting there. Could you tell our audience a little <laughs> bit about your first gig in TV yeah. what the, and then what that journey was like? Kim worked with me. She was amazing at Channel 40. So um, I was in... Um, yeah, it was bad. It's a, it's a scary story, but I'm very lucky to be working at Channel 7. It's the number one TV station locally in ABC the, in the world. ABC News in New York, Channel 7. Yeah, a, a, number tonight. one in the world, in the, in the local station in the world. So I'm so lucky and the nicest people in the world. Um, Kim worked with me at a small station called uh, TV40. It doesn't exist anymore. It was a great place. Um, but I couldn't even get that job. I applied to 208 places. Stations across the country. Yes, tiny ones, tiny. I said I would clean like, the What's some places, like North Dakota, are we talking about? WYFF, you know, Greenville, South Carolina. That was actually a big station to which I applied. Uh, WCTI in New Bern, North Carolina. I mean, Macon, Georgia, there was another one. I don't remember the call letters. But my mom, my late mommy, she, I, was in, I was in business school on scholarship in Germany in grad school. And I was, I was loving it and I was speaking German. I speak German, so I'm speaking German. Oh, you do? Yes, I went to eight, eighth grade in, German. My, in Germany. My dad's a professor. Maybe you could sign off in German at the end I of could. the show. I could, ausgezeichnet. Okay. Tschüss, auf Wiedersehen. Okay. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> so, but, um, so I was there and I was like, why am I doing this? I love it, but I wanna go try to be a reporter. So I came back and I applied and applied and applied and applied and applied and I got turned down everywhere and then finally, uh, my mom, my late mom, said, let's jump in the station wagon and go down the East Coast and just zigzag to all these places. There was no internet, no email. Remember back, right? right? Yes. Right? It was, you know, abacus and scratch. Newspaper. Right. <laughs> yes. So we went all the way, went to all the tiny stations that were ignoring me and nobody would call me back. And some places I waited five minutes to talk to somebody, anybody. Other places, two hours. And you couldn't make an appointment because nobody would answer the phone or talk to you much and just say, listen, you know, you need to call us when you've already had a job. Well, how do I get a job if I haven't had a job? Whatever. Same things people have to deal with now. Um, but we went down the whole zigzag, and I think we talked to people at about two dozen small stations and, and radio stations. Mm -hmm. Got down to Fort Myers and Atlantic City called. Actually, Linwood, New Jersey, Route 9. And it was Return your call. They had your, yes, your they demo called. tape, your resume. I had no demo tape. 
Again, Duke. You don't do a demo tape, but okay. Duke. There's no demo tape. Gotcha. So, I mean, I had done the local Duke TV station, but there's no demo tape. I mean, you really haven't worked. You don't have a demo tape unless you've actually made money sure. doing it. That makes sense. <laughs> right? Otherwise, it's a pretend Pretend tape, demo right? tape. <laughs> right. So, anyway, so he said, uh, Jeff Whitaker said, do you want to come work for me? Six dollars an hour and, you know, the hours are going to be terrible but I want to talk to you and come in for an interview. Sounds enticing. See, right. So, and then from there, I worked there for about a year and a half, and I was answering phones. I was the assignment desk. I ended up reporting, working for free on weekends, shooting stories that they would then air or not air, and then he helped me. My other people, friends there helped me. Kim helped me. Um, and then I reported there, and then I anchored there, just filling in. Then I got a tape tape. And I went down to WCTI in New Bern, and I got a job at ABC, the local ABC station. So lived in New Bern for a while. I lived in, actually, uh, Atlantic Beach, which was at the beach. I lived in Ocean City up here, and I lived in Atlantic Beach down there. And I worked there for a year and a half, and then I got a job, uh, again, reporting and anchoring, mostly reporting, just fill-in anchoring. And then I got a job in Raleigh, North Carolina. And, I mean, these jobs paid uh, $14,000 a year was my first job, 14.5. I see it on my social security. Yeah. And I love it. I'm so proud of that. Well, you should so, be because yeah. despite that, there's yeah. not a lot of those jobs out there, as no. you know, yeah. and so competitive. More now, but it's changing so much. Um, you know, there's so many places we can look for our news now. But when I got to Raleigh, um, at each place I went, I, I did a lot of investigative stories. And in Raleigh, I had just finished uh, a few stories on these unsolved murders involving prostitutes. Yeah. And there was a very clear pattern and nobody was really looking into it. And a couple of detectives reached out to me and said, could you shine a light on this? And you know, we have your contacts. You were working around the clock, working with what's going on at the fire department, what's going on at the police department. You're not just working on the clock, you're working all the time. Right, and developing those developing stories. Developing the context, developing the trust, developing the story. Right, a lot of them go nowhere. and. Uh, I was, I was anchoring with a really nice man, and he sent our tape on his demo to New York, and the news director in New York called me. I had no idea I was on somebody's tape. I did, I'm not sending my stuff to New York City from Raleigh, North Carolina. That was so Channel 17. So completely unbeknownst to you. They call me. And I was applying everywhere, but I was not. It's the best way not. to apply for a job, have someone yeah, do it for you. It's on, but that's a big cardinal sin. You don't put somebody else on your tape. A big no-no because of this. So um, Bart Fader called me, he said, yeah, this is Bart Fader from WABC, best guy ever, the guy who hired me. Mm -hmm. And I said, WABC, I love radio. I worked at Channel 40, WMGM, did radio there, ripping and doing stuff. Um, Rip and read, Rip and you're the news guy, right. Rip and, I didn't know if you know what that was, yes. but you do. And um, I have a little radio background, a little bit. There you go, so four o'clock in the morning, all this. But um, I said, I love radio, but I'm really working in TV now, and he said, let me just clarify. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. This is Bart Fader calling from WABC TV in New York, and I'd love to see more stuff. I saw a little bit of your work. What are you working on now? I was able to talk about the investigative report, and he said, you gotta come up for an interview. Can you imagine? I cannot. And I, and I said, I'm so sorry that, you know, can we go back to 30 seconds ago when I was not the dumbest person you've <laughs> talked to today thinking that you're a radio station? I would never th dare to send you my stuff. But yeah, it worked out. Well, when we come back, folks, we are going to talk more about Michelle's interview. And also, we're going to tell you a little bit about what it's like to be an anchor day to day in New York City when we come back. Yay! Take it from me. Living with diabetes is no easy task. But I learned how to manage my health condition and so can you. The Diabetes Self-Management Program is a six-week self-management workshop created by Stanford University. The program provides you with proven strategies to manage your diabetes and reclaim your life. You will join an interactive and mutually supportive workshop whose success builds confidence to effectively manage your diabetes and allows you to maintain an active lifestyle. See how proper nutrition, exercise, and medication management help you increase your energy, manage side effects, and keep you feeling in control. You will not only receive a copy of this book, but you will get guidance and support from others like you living with diabetes. 
The Diabetes Self-Management Workshop meets once a week for six weeks. This innovative workshop is offered to all Monmouth County residents. Call the number on your screen to register or get additional information at scannj.org. Well, welcome back, folks. My name is Mike Cevolino. We're joined once again by our guest today, ABC News anchor Michelle Charlesworth. Thank you so much again for coming in of today. Course. And, uh, you guys are the best. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So yeah. why don't you tell folks, again, not familiar with what you do, uh, a little bit about what a day in the life of a ABC news anchor is like. Well, for us, we're local. So we are constantly moving around, um, anchoring. Let's say this morning I was up at 2 o'clock. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I was in by uh, 3.20. Okay. Okay, into the city. So you're in New the, Jersey. You're in the city so at 3.20. 3.20, uh, working on scripts until 4.12, on the air at 4.28. So in between putting on hair, doing hair and makeup really quickly, most of the time spent in scripts, some writing, some polishing, some changing, some flipping things around, adding things. Um, now, do you wear what you're going to wear for the, this is yeah. my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you wear it, it in. Yes. Okay. And people always ask, why do you guys wear dresses? Does somebody tell you you have to wear dresses? No. We don't have to match anything. It just you're one zip away from done. Anything that streamlines is great. I feel bad for the guys. I got to pick out a tie and a thing and a thing, this and that. Did I wear blue pants and a jacket? What are my socks? No, right. none of that. None. So easy. So yeah. So um, I just wear it in with comfy shoes. Okay. All right. So now it's four eleven, four twelve. Yeah. You're yeah. working on your assignment for the day. You're doing right. your hair, your makeup. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on the weekends we do our own hair and makeup. Some other shows we have hair and makeup, but it's you know it's NASCAR. This is a pit crew. It's not so, pretty. Yeah, whether I'm out. doing it or there, yeah. And then we're we're on the set. Um, now, prior to that, I'm in scripts upstairs on the fourth floor. So we're in the newsroom. Hey, what was the latest? That the 14 year old girl. Did they find her? Did that four year old? Is the four year old okay? The four year old was in critical condition. Burns from this. You've got to be up on everything that's happened in not only New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, nationwide. Why is there still a tennis pro or a tennis, uh, you know, phenom missing? What's the latest on that? Do we get anything? I mean, this is like, and we're all talking. Yeah, it's great. It's been, and when I say all, I'm talking about me, uh, an executive producer, two writers, <laughs> and working their tails off since 10 o'clock the night before. So, you know, and then I go down, and usually the other anchor is down on the, on the set working on scripts. So. Okay. Yeah. I see. So there seems like there's a bit of continuity from day to day. There'll yes. be stories that are developing over the course of the week or... Updating things. Right. Constantly trying to make sure nothing falls through the holes. What's the latest on this? Did they find the bull that was missing on Long Island? Whatever happened to this? I remember that bull. Whatever remember happened that to him? They found the bull and went to a sanctuary in northern Great. New Jersey. So, so folks, <laughs> those of you who did not know the conclusion of the bull story... Right. The bull is safe and sound. The livestock run away. They, uh, they gain their freedom. The livestock is live. So <laughs> that's breaking right here on Scan. You didn't hear it anywhere else. That's right. They're right. This is fine. Um, so, and, and it's, I mean, everyone is interested. Everyone's compassionate. Everybody's in it to win it. And so we're constantly, you know, playing off of each other. We got Mark on the assignment desk. He's got stuff coming in. Sometimes we have everything set. Everything gets blown up and we send the lead reporter to something else and then you know he's on top of breaking he's unbelievable he's on top of breaking news and so with just a well-oiled machine of interested 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 people who are friends so it's maybe a little bit like controlled chaos because yes. you've got the continuity of the existing stories yes. but then obviously yes. the world turns and right? things but, are developing yeah but then you're constantly you know rewriting those to reflect updates um you know we had a story today that and i was going the Thanksgiving meal for 10 just went up 14% because of all this inflation mess. I don't want to hear 14%. Let's crunch the numbers. Let me see. I'm going to find out what, okay, for 10 people, it's usually uh, $47. Now it's $54. It's around $6 normally. Now it's $6.45, something like that. That's a little more meaningful to me than up 14%. Because when I go to the store, something your viewers, they can understand. I think so. <laughs> But just things like that, you know, and we're, yeah, so we're constantly looking things up, boiling it down, making it something that you would say to your friend. Right. In okay. In the way that you Makes would sense. say it to your friend. I wouldn't say, do you know that Thanksgiving for 10 is up 14%? Yeah. No, I would say. It's if you, you know, want your audience to fall asleep, you might say it that way. You might say, yeah, we're not for that. Yeah, we just, 
anything that builds a wall between you and the people listening, no good. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. now here's a question I have. Yes. You've done both these roles, so obviously okay. uh, well equipped to answer this. Okay. Difference between field reporter mm -hmm. and the anchor person. If you're an anchor, there's a bathroom down the hall. Okay. Okay. Is that in the job description? And coffee. The perks? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, anchoring, um, everybody I work with is so um, authentic and real and genuine, and they work so hard, So, and, and they've all been out there, okay? So there's an understanding when you come back in the building and you're anchoring, you're in the sauce. Your hands are in the mud, you're gotcha. in the sauce, you're cooking okay. it. You know, everybody's in the sauce. We've been out reporting and writing our stories on a notepad. We've been in the building, writing in the computer, you know, voicing it in the box, voicing it in the live truck, voicing it in a smaller truck. You know, out there talking to people. You asked me before, do I like radio? Television, I love television because you're there. You're looking at what you're talking about. You're looking at the Statue of Liberty, the Hudson. You're looking at, um, you know, the university. You're talking about the fire. You can actually, what was that? That was nice. Yeah, I think the studio's good. falling apart. I love it. Yeah. See, you're here. Yeah. It's happening. So I love it's controlled that. controlled chaos here at SCAN I as well. I love it. So you're in it. You're looking at it. You're talking to people. In radio, you can just call them up for a sound bite. And you don't have True. to go to the fire. You don't have to. So many of my friends in radio, they're right there. And they're there for the, when the chief talks. But, you know, if they're talking about something else, it could be a finance story, they can just call people. They don't have I to see. go there. I love the going. Finding and the getting of it. Do you know what that's from? No, what's that from? <laughs> Sierra Madre. I feel like I should know. The treasure of Sierra Madre. The finding and the getting of it. So I was going to ask you to say it gold. again. Yeah. That's why it's so, that's why it's so um, valuable. The I think we're going to change the name of the show <laughs> to Scans, Finding, and the Getting the of It. The Finding and the Getting yeah. of It. That's why gold's so, so expensive. Not because of its intrinsic value, but because it takes so much to find it. So and anyway. Get it. And get it. And get it. The finding and the getting of it. So anyway, so that's, that's the difference. Is that you're at, and when you're field reporting, you may not get lunch. You know, you're out there, but you also have the camaraderie of the press corps, um, reporters. Um, the print, elements. Print, radio, TV, hurricanes, holding onto the pole, saying don't come out here, and then you're out there. That's, you know, the logic gotcha. of that. Yes. Okay. Covering Sandy, covering, you know, so many different things. Um, it's great. So it's, it's awesome. a great way to start in the business, too, I would yeah. imagine, and build connections. Yeah. And, and my normal, right now I'm filling in for my friend who's on maternity leave, but I'm working Monday through Friday, these crazy hours up at 2, and I'm usually done by about 9, 10, home. Um, but my normal is I report three days a week. Awesome. Love it out field reporting. Now, is they primarily in Jersey or five, bar could be anywhere? Usually all over the place, that's pre-COVID, but now mostly in New Jersey, when I get back to that, that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then Saturday, Sunday, up at four, on the air at six, and anchoring with Mike Marza and Brittany Bell. Which you guys are the best, Ooh, by the you. way. You're so nice, thank you. We think so. You well, are a staple in our household, I will tell you that. Nice. Thank you, the bee's knees, I just think those guys are awesome. So it's really, you know, and I always say, we have a new boss. I said, you know what I do is I anchor to support my reporting habit. Because you do get a little bit of a bump in salary to be on the air anchoring. Well deserved. But I love the reporting because you're in it and you're out there and you're looking at stuff and you're seeing people and either it makes you old or it keeps you young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends on your attitude. I think it's keeping you young. I hope. I don't know. But again, it's just like scan. If you're curious and you're interested and you're constantly learning and you're talking to people and you're, there's something to it. There's a little bit of magic there. Gotcha. Good to know. All okay. right. Here's a question my mother-in-law wanted me to ask you. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yes. She wants to know, do you get to choose yes. what stories you work on? Um, How much say do you have? Oh, they listen to us. They love it. They're like, bring us more. Bring us, bring us, bring us. Um, and the, the biggest one I did recently was a story on women and jobs during COVID. So many women had to quit their jobs. Why? To take care of their children who were learning at home now. That's correct. Right? And you couldn't bring, if you quit your job, what happens? Do you get unemployment? No, you do not, even though you've paid into it for decades in some cases. So that was crippling to women in careers. And so we looked at that, again, now my interest in finance and economics played in. It helped me so much. And it also whet my appetite to find out 
How do we drop the ball with these women? Were there any legislators going, you know what? If you can establish that you had to quit your job to take care of kids because of something we said, we closed all the schools and forced you to do this, mm -hmm. otherwise you're a bad parent. Mm -hmm. And by the way, a lot of men had to do it too, yeah. but it was predominantly women. Yes. Then we will give you your unemployment. And single moms, not to mention single too. Single moms. Nobody stuck up for them. So that was my that was the story that I pitched, and I'm very proud to have done a couple pieces on that. So that's so, what I want to ask you so as yeah. a follow-up. So you can bring the germ of an idea yeah. of a story mm -hmm. to uh, a producer. Well, it's got to be a lot more than a germ. You have to have called Flush people. Flush it out. Yeah, somewhere. big time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, hey, I have this, 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 and this is the information. And, and it can't be, hey, I saw this somewhere else. No. It's got, right. yeah, they're interested in news. Unique. News. It's three quarters of the word, new, right? News, new. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, I mean, and they love that. So your they eyes and it. ears are always open for. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'll say, what's going on over there? What's that? Mm -hmm. What's that sign? Why is, my, why is my restaurant closed? It says they can't hire people. Why? why? Why can't they hire people? Nobody wants to work? What's going on? Stuff like that. Gotcha. Now, to that point, mm -hmm. you did, uh, what many folks, uh, self-included, consider to be uh, a very compelling series on skin cancer. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about not only the finished piece, but the process of how you decided to do that and the journey of doing it? One of our managing editors was finding out about how I'd been sick and I was dealing with skin cancer. I was only 30, I'm 51 now, um, and kind of walking through how I found it, why didn't I get it treated earlier? And so I said, oh my gosh, does anybody want to see this? She said, yes! So you yourself uh, are a survivor. Yeah, 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 yeah. God so bless you. So I have you. a big old scar from here to here. Um, it was basal cell carcinoma. And um, I was covering a story, a medical story, that I was not supposed to study, co cover that day, but somebody was sick, or I don't know what happened, but confluence of events, boom, I end up doing a story on dermatology. and. Um, I was with uh, Dr. Bruce Katz in the city, right? And my photographer Frank Bell was—he was like, "Doc, what do you think about this?" And I said, "Frank, you're not supposed to ask him about that." And the and Dr. Katz said, "Forget it. It's fine. It's just a mole on your eyebrow." Michelle, come here. What's this on your face? And I said, "Oh, it's nothing. I got a facial. I never get facials, but they tried to pop it." And he said, "I think it's cancer." And he, yeah. This he, is while you're working. I'm. We had finished the whole shoot. I had done. You know, and the, and the piece was. You know, we were done. We were wrapped and leaving, leaving his office. And so, yeah, he found my skin cancer, basal cell carcinoma, and Michael Bruck sewed me back up. And uh, so what's not to, I mean, it's great to, to tell everybody, wear sunscreen every day. And women ask me, what do you wear at night for face cream? I go, no, 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 baby, it's happened during the day. Wear your sunscreen. It doesn't have to be fancy. And so that uh, became form a story. became this, a that very- became, Diane Sawyer interviewed me on Good Morning America. Wow. It was amazing. That's so, amazing. It was so, good, so I hope it helps people. Well, I don't know how it can. You were really just an inspiration to people on so many different oh. levels. And um, from a career point of view, uh, for those at home mm -hmm. who are interested or have a loved one who's interested in a career in journalism, what advice would you give them? Read the paper every day. It's so inexpensive. And, and I could be talking about the Post, the Daily News, the Philadelphia Inquirer. I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be the Herald Tribune, um, New York Times. Of course. Um, but it's not expensive. You can self-educate. Even if you're not interested in journalism, you can self-educate constantly. I love it when people say, they don't teach you in school, that in school. Well, what, you have some control over your brain, don't you? And you have eyeballs, you know how to read. So read, read, read. Get out there, watch as much stuff as you can. Do Facebook Lives. Um, reach out to people and ask them about what they think about the, you know, the industry. Apply to 208 jobs and get turned down a million times. Go with your mom on the road and say you'll clean the bathrooms and work for free like I did. You know, it works actually. Pay the price. Yeah, it's fine. You pay your dues so that you're good at the end, because then you don't want to make your mistakes in the big, in the big cities. Right? Michelle Charlesworth, ABC News <laughs> anchor. We thank you so much for coming in Thanks today, for and talking me. to our uh, audience, Thanks. our members. We thank greatly appreciate that. Uh, we'll see you back here again on Welcome to Scan. My name is Mike Chevalino, and thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.